Hey everybody! My name is Northern Lion, and I am here with another weekly humble sale roguelike. I got the words all jumbled up, but you get the idea. The weekly roguelike sale that is happening at uh, the Humble store that I have linked in the video description below. Today I am looking at Sword of the Stars the Pit, and this is much more along the lines of a traditional roguelike. I always hesitate to say like, oh, this is super roguelike-ish, like, like rogue, you know, like the original, the, the genre namesake. Um, because people get really bent out of shape if you are incorrect about that. But what I will say is that this is less like, you know, the Binding of Isaac, uh, or Teleglitch Die More Edition in its kind of fusion of twin-stick shooter and horror elements with roguelike conventions. And it's certainly basically nothing like Paranautical Activity, the first-person shooter mixed with those roguelike conventions. Instead, this is much more like Dungeons of Dreadmore. It is a pseudo-turn-based, traditional, dungeon-crawly type roguelike. Without further ado... Why don't we get started? We're going to play through on normal difficulty mode here. Uh, and I'm going to play as a Marine, but one of the things that's it's interesting about this is that we do have multiple classes. And each of these classes have their own strengths and weaknesses. And there's a lot of kind of skills and attributes and a lot of numbers that go on. Uh, and a lot of percentages and a lot of probabilities that happen in this game. It's definitely a game for those of you who are interested in stuff like that. You know, you would less do things by a feel, more the kind of person that maybe would have a spreadsheet open and be like, okay, there's a good chance of this working. Um, we're going to play as the Marine. But uh, what's kind of cool is that, you know, compared to something like Dungeons of Dreadmore, there's a little bit less randomness with your starts. Like in Dungeons of Dreadmore, you can obviously start with, you know, endless permutations of skills and abilities, basically. But in this, uh, your starting position is kind of much more well-defined, much more specific. So if you look at the Marine, you can see all the equipment that they have here in addition to their skills. So we've got a, a knife, basically a machete, an auto pistol, 40 pistol rounds, an assault rifle, gr uh, three different grenades, 60 rifle rounds, some rations because there is a hunger meter, five medical kits, basically, some armor, some breaching charges, and another big med kit. And if you look at the engineer, it's totally different. He has a knife, a pistol, a little bit more ammo, but he doesn't have... Uh, like an assault rifle or anything like that. He's got some grenades, but anyway, the same thing for the scout. Uh, lots of different things here, and actually, like a much smaller inventory for her in general. But in any case, we're going to play as the Marine, uh, because I think that is probably the easiest for me, and I'm pretty bad at Sword of the Stars of the Pit. That is kind of something that is becoming pretty clear, I think, overall, uh, over the course of all these games. I, th this is my genre, for sure, uh, and I'm still very, very bad at it. These games have a tendency to be difficult, so I didn't mean to kill that enemy right off the bat, but let's talk about what we've got going on here. This is our character, uh, and, you know, like uh, Dungeons of Dreadmore, or like The Binding of Isaac, or like Paranautical Activity, we're just, or like Teleglitch, like all the games we've covered so far, our goal is to, you know, start on floor one, and then make our way down as deep as we can go, and I don't actually know uh, how long Sword of the Stars the Pit is, but what I will say is that I've made it past floor 10, it took me like two or three hours, uh, and there was still apparently lots of game to go after that. I, I have heard that, uh, like, a successful run overall can take you, you know, 12 hours or, or beyond, so I am... This is one of the games out of this bundle that is maybe a little bit less on the, like, okay, just one more run type thing. It's a little bit more like Teleglitch in that it's, uh... You know, the kind of thing that you would invest maybe a lot of time into one run, and then after you finish uh, playing that for a couple nights, then you'll come back to it and try it again. Now, what's kind of interesting about this is that in a kind of Dreadmore fashion, uh, there's all sorts of kind of loot that we can get, and it can come in some unlikely places. So, let's just navigate around a little bit here. I'll explain what's going on with the... Uh you know, actual controls of the game. Basically, uh, you can use the keyboard 100% to control this game. WASD to move around. Uh, usually you get two moves before an enemy can move once, at least with the Marine. That might change based on your statistics. And you have multiple weapons. If you look down in the bottom right, I have a knife right now or a machete. I also have a punch that I can use if my uh, blade breaks. I have a grenade, a frag grenade, and then a regular grenade. I don't know what HE grenade actually stands for. High explosive, I guess. Uh, an assault rifle, which actually allows us to shoot multiple targets in one turn. And an auto pistol, which allows us to shoot multiple bullets in one turn, but at the same target. But I prefer to use my knife, at least to start here, because it's a little bit survival horror-y. Not in the game's tone, necessarily, uh, but in the way that, um, you know, ammo is not necessarily the most common thing to come by. So... Our goal uh, on these early floors, at least uh, from my perspective, is to get as much loot as possible and increase our chances of surviving on later floors. So one thing that we'll come across all the time is almost like tests. Like, we, we have skills in foraging, we have skills in, you know, mechanics, skills in computer technology, and we'll come to things like rot piles, and we can forage in those rot piles, and our statistic will give us a certain probability of getting something out of it. So this is basically just a garbage dump, uh, but I got nothing there. 
because my foraging skill is not good enough to give me like a really great percentage. What did we get here though? Sonic nodule. We'll talk about the crafting system and the cooking system that goes on in the game as we get a little bit further, but um, we need to find some stuff in order to make that work first. Um, let's see if we can find something else because uh, rod piles are probably the most pervasive kind of like ambient loot that we can come across. But they're not uh, the best, usually. There's also weapon crates that we can find. See, there we got something there. A food pellet that will help with my hunger meter, which is that uh, blue meter in the bottom right. And we got uh, sonic nodule and some bone slivers. Maybe we'll be able to make something out of that eventually. 52% chance on this one. Nothing found. Yeah, so we will be able to find, uh, you know, weapons crates and... Uh, Armor kind of depositories as well refrigerators and freezers that'll give us much needed food We can craft sandwiches if we find a stove. Hey, what do we get here? Just another food palette. Not so great um, Okay, so the map is very useful here. I'm gonna use that to try to figure out uh, Where I'm supposed to go because again, you know even though your goal is to get down to the next floor It's not always or maybe even ever the best idea to just sprint down to the next floor unless I guess you're being chased by an enemy that you can't kill um, usually you want to take your time and, you know, you get experience for successfully foraging, things like this. You want to level up as much as possible because there is a, you know, despite, I mean, I hate to say this, I was going to say despite being a roguelike, it's got RPG elements. Obviously, most roguelikes have some RPG type elements going on. Um, but yeah, it's a game where, again, and I've said this for a couple of these games now, but, uh, you're leveling up, like, your actual statistics of your own personage. Those are as important as the loot that you actually get. What do we get here? Soul Force Rations. So those are, um, uh, food again. So we've gotten a lot of food so far, which is good. We haven't needed to use it, uh, any of it. Oh, that was stupid of me. Uh, we haven't needed to use any of it yet, but we may need to use some of it, uh, in the future if this goes on long enough. So... 47% chance of success. We're so close to leveling up. That helped us out a little bit. Are we done with this floor yet? We've got to be pretty close. Maybe, yeah, that's a dead end. And there's probably another dead end down here. You might be saying, by the way, hey, I've never heard of this game, but so uh, Sword of the Stars sounds really familiar. Yeah, this is actually uh, a spin-off of uh, Kerberos Productions. It's the same company that made this. Um, it's a spin-off of their... Uh, space strategy games that were kind of similar to uh, the Galactic Civilizations franchise, at least as I understand it. I have not played them myself because, you know, if you watch how bad I am at roguelikes, you can probably understand that space strategy is maybe a little bit above my pay grade when it comes to my IQ. Anyway, we leveled up. Um, that, that was just food for thought. So when you level up, you get uh, points that you can spend on your stats and your skills. So uh, as a Marine, we might want to invest in our Might skill. Um, so maybe we'll put two in there, and we'll put one in Brains, which will improve uh, all of our attributes basically related to things that require us to be smart. Hacking computer systems, seeing door traps, things like that, because there are a lot of those. Uh, additionally, we get uh, skill points that we can use uh, to level up our skills and things, you know, as specific as, like, weapon mastery, like pistols and rifles and assault weapons can be, we can be more adept with those. Or upgrade our mechanical skill, which, again, will make us better hackers or, you know... You understand what I mean by that. Uh, I can improve my foraging as well, which I'm going to do because we're going to be doing a lot of that. And I think I'm going to improve my blade skill. And they cost differential amounts. Like, some of them cost one skill point, some of them cost two. And I only have two points remaining now. Uh, I am going to invest my remaining two points in mechanical. Beautiful. So there's our level. I kind of wish it did pop up with, like, a big box that was just like, hey, you're ready to level up. Uh, instead, you have to pay very close attention to that meter down there uh, on the very bottom. But it still works very well. This is a game I actually like a whole lot. Uh, it reminds me of a little bit. When I, when I played it last year for, for my channel, I described it as a... It's kind of like a sci-fi Dungeons of Dreadmore. And really, like, this and Dungeons of Dreadmore are both very similar. And that's not to take anything away uh, from either game. I think uh, the the first time I, the first one of them that I played was Dungeons of Dreadmore because it came out like a year, no, two years earlier, I guess. Ah, uh, we effed up the freezer opening that could have given us delicious food. What's up with these beds, though? Oh, we can't rest in them. Okay. Um, and I was like, you know, I get Dungeons of Dreadmore, but I'm not necessarily a hundred percent into it just because. It's a genre that I've never played before, really, at the time, anyway. Uh, but then when Sword of the Stars of the Pit came out, I was like, you know what? I'm actually a little bit more adept at this game than I would expect to be. Uh, as a result of the fact that I played Dungeons of Dreadmore, then I went back to Dreadmore. And you wouldn't know it from the video that I did on Dungeons of Dreadmore, but I'm better at Dreadmore as a result of playing this as well. So we effed up uh, opening that locker as well. We actually can use lock picks. Okay, here's a good one. Drop Stasis Field. 1% chance of success. We're actually going to say no to that one, and the reason we're going to say no to that is sometimes if you fail a hack, uh, you will put yourself in a position where an alarm will go off, 
And that is not what we want to do. Is this entire floor? It's not quite done yet. So I'm disappointed with the way that this floor has gone for me, but, you know, that's that's the way the cookie crumbles in roguelikes sometimes, you know? Sometimes you have a, a beautiful bounty ahead of you, and sometimes uh, you just leave for the next floor without really getting all that much back. So in, in contrast to something like Dungeons of Dreadmore, because this is the game that it has maybe the most similarities to, uh, Sword of the Stars of the Pit is a little bit slower, and I don't mean that as a, a, a negative necessarily. 20% chance of success? Ah, it's jammed. Okay, and that's already been looted. Um, I don't mean that as a negative, you know, it gives it a little bit more time to breathe uh, and, and stuff like that. But it is the kind of game that, you know, Dreadmore is already pretty long in and of itself. Uh, but I think Sword of the Stars of the Pit strikes me as a little bit uh, even longer than that. And I, I believe that there are more than ten floors. But what's kind of cool is that uh, the progress that you earn... Yeah, we'll pick up that those antibodies. I'll look at my inventory at some point, I promise you. But for now, I'm just kind of like picking up raw materials in the hopes that we find a stove or something along those lines pretty soon. Uh, this is a door trap, so I'm a little bit concerned about that. Uh, but I could be able to open this. I actually don't have any lock picks. Never mind. But we have a 43% chance of opening it. Oh, come on. Just give me the free experience. We can keep doing this and may eventually set off an alarm. There we go. So our lockpick skill has been upgraded. And there's just like a smoking husk of a like biomedical unit in here. Uh, what do we have in the locker? 48% chance of success of getting something here. That's pretty good. Oh, come on. Dice rolls have been not so great for me. Ruined charging hub. So I guess that would allow us to uh, charge up our, our technology. There are some battery power devices in the game, I believe. Oh, this is actually a fairly difficult enemy here. He's doing almost as much damage as I'm doing, but he also gave me a ton of experience. So this is a situation where, as I look at it now, I'm like, maybe we will actually want to uh, use a, a pistol or something as opposed to just using our blade. Even though ammo is very scarce, uh, let's use an assault rifle, and this will allow me to shoot uh, multiple targets multiple times. I actually missed the robot both times, which is really frustrating, but let's try this again. I missed all three times? Is it because I'm stunned? I don't know. Let's try this again. Three times. Okay, we actually did manage to kill him there. But we're using way, 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 way too much ammo. But let's auto-pistol this rat. Okay. So we did get some experience there. We actually are fairly close to leveling up as well. Um, let's continue moving on here. So far, so good. But again, it has that typical kind of roguelike type structure to it where... Uh, you know, once you find yourself in a bad position, you just die. There, there's very little lead up to it, at least for me. Uh, it, it's not like a slow descent into destruction. It is usually just like a, a rapid decline. We should probably consider eating something. That wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. What do we have here? Secure weapons locker. 1% chance. Gosh darn it. Um, we'll continue moving onwards here, and maybe we will encounter lockpicks because or we'll level up and I'll be able to you know bump up my lockpick skill because that would be useful as well as of right now I'm losing a lot of loot uh, but you know everything in these games is a trade-off you know I'm not getting as much armor but I also start with you know maybe better equipment or at least more offensive equipment that uh, I can use to take out the enemies and various traps and trials and tribulations that I end up encountering so we are still basically one-shotting these enemies I realize that my blade is damaged but usually it continues to be fairly useful as we move on here. Where are we? We're here. Okay. So let's just run away. Again, it is... I said pseudo turn-based uh, in the in the intro to this video. And I stand by that. It, it is pseudo turn-based. And that's to say, you know, it's not 100% turn-based because if enemies are not around, you can just walk as much as you want. And it feels very much like it's real time. Uh, but if enemies are around, then it, it slows down a little bit. So we can level up here. Let's level up two in might and one in finesse this time. And why don't we level up our lock picking skill and our mechanical skill, and can I level up my blade again? I can, okay, so we'll absolutely do that. It's kind of like a weird decision to level up your blade constantly because I don't think this is a weapon that I'm gonna be using into the late game. That being said, uh, it's nice to have it for now anyway. If you're wondering, by the way, why I'm not doing anything uh, with my e equipment in my inventory. Basically, I'm saving it until I find some, like, crafting blueprints or recipes, just so I know what I can actually build. Uh, and additionally, we don't really need them right now, and, you know, the standard kind of roguelike convention, if I can save good things until later, then that is beneficial for me. Unfortunately, if I save them too long, I'll probably just end up dying. So, you know, th there's something to be said for just using things as you get them as well. This is looking like, uh, you know what, why don't we use a grenade here? Because we never used a grenade here. We'll just use a frag grenade, and uh, I'll put it out uh, 
here. This will not hit me, but it will blow up all of them. Wow, that actually did a lot of good work there. Okay, so what do we get? A scent gland. I, I think I blew up the charging hub like an idiot uh, in our ammo crate. 84% chance of getting some ammo. Hey, pretty good. So it's, it's really interesting in the way that, you know, normally when you consider like, oh, how do I improve my skill? It's always kill enemies, level up. Um, but, oh, I shouldn't be using my assault rifle right now. There we go. Uh, it's always kill enemies and uh, level up. But in uh, Sword of the Stars of the Pit, it's a little bit different. You actually learn by doing a lot of the time, which is kind of an interesting way of, of handling things that I have uh, not really been exposed to too much before this. We have a 99% chance of getting this freezer. We got a key card earlier, which basically opens on all or almost all unlocked doors on the uh, level. I can't believe that we've not come across like a stove or something. What do we do in our charging hub here? 26% chance of success. Oh, this allows us to repair things like our blade or our armor. Unfortunately, I broke it by touching it. And that's pretty much, uh, you know, a microcosm of my existence in this earth uh, as well. So I don't think we've killed everything, and I say that because uh, I, I think, well, first off, I just saw a rat, but also, um, oh, you know what? I'm totally going the wrong way. I just saw a rat, but also uh, I was getting stopped when I was moving as quickly as possible. So usually that is uh, indicative of there being an enemy around that it, basically that delay is them moving when you want to be moving. Oh, there's another one. It actually, it's, oh, no, no, there wasn't. I was just walking into a big pole. Okay, sorry. Um, our exit actually will be like right here. Well, I thought it was right here. We'll see. You can usually tell what's in a room. Oh, that thing exploded on me. Um, you can usually tell what's in a room by looking at kind of like the icon above the door. So the icon here is like either a world map or a manhole cover, which usually indicates going down to the next uh, floor. So let's try to repair this data console. Please, it's 6% chance, but what if it works? Ruined. But my electronic skill was upgraded, so there is that. Where are we now? Hmm. Well, I am looking at the map here, trying to figure out where I would like to go. And I'm actually a little bit confused, because this is the first time I think I've ever had this, where uh, I don't know where to go. Oh, is it just this? Why did I not look at this before? Ugh. Probably because there was this big red thing over the door. Okay, so maybe we'll do one or two more floors, and then, then we'll uh, leave. I just want to see what some of this does. Soft screen. A portion of flexible computer screen, like a plastic sheet of paper. Um, some things you can use, some things you can just... Uh, you know, you can look at like the description or you can destroy them. Uh, I'm gonna eat some food. We have rations here. We're not very low on our hunger meter. Again, it's a not the fastest moving game and I don't mean that as an insult. You can be a little bit more methodical. So we'll uh, eat some rations here until we get back to nearly full hunger meter. And then why don't we go down to floor four? And immediately, I don't like the looks of things on this floor, but I can probably kill you in one hit. Oh, okay, never mind. I'm an idiot. Uh, We'll take out our assault rifle again. We only have five bullets left, which is frightening because I need to reload pretty soon. In fact, now we have zero bullets left uh, in this clip anyway. Let's take out our auto pistol and we'll try... Actually, you know what? I think we can just use our, our knife because these enemies are already wounded. So yeah. Oh my god. What the... There were a lot of, you know, blood particles. Auto pistol damaged, armor damaged. Oh, this guy is like an acid. He has an acid attack. Uh, that's really frustrating for me, as it is slowly destroying pieces of my inventory that I would normally consider pretty important. Uh, that's okay. We'll find a way to repair those in the future. Can I get something from this desk? No? Okay, uh, let's take a second and be methodical. It's a smart idea. Reload our assault rifle here. By the way, whenever you see, like, a meter pause in the middle, that indicates that it, like, the number of turns that it takes. So if it pauses twice, or, sorry, if it pauses once, then it takes two turns for you to reload it. If it pauses three times, then it takes four turns for you to reload it. I think uh, I have my math right there, but I may be mistaken. Let's continue killing these, like, mechanized gargoyles here. Can't do too much with the beds, but we do have a 58% chance of bypassing the red in the lock. Oh, no! Okay, so we got a polymer infuser. What is that? This fusion injector pours advanced polymers into any weak points on a piece of armor. Right-click on it to use it. Uh, my shirt is damaged, isn't it? Durability 40, 54 out of 60. Actually, that's pretty good. Um, I'm just trying to see. My blade looks okay as well. Some of the stuff has been a little bit weakened, but not too bad. So, we succeeded in actually uh, opening that area, but unfortunately I set off an alarm as well, which means that enemies are going to be a little bit more aggressive towards me as I come through here. So when it says blade damage, that's actually, like, it's not as bad as it sounds. It's not great, of course. 
Uh, but it doesn't mean that your knife is actually like cracked in half. It just means that it's losing some of its durability as you uh, move along here. So let's see about this one. 56% chance. Please don't let me... Hey, excellent. What did we get? Ballistics repair kit. That might be something that we can use to repair a firearm, potentially, like our auto pistol, which is actually uh, a little bit damaged. 66% chance. No problem. Okay. We're getting close to leveling up again. There are big bads, by the way, uh, like enemies that are exceptionally difficult relative to the norm. This is not necessarily one of them, but this guy is pretty annoying. Uh, he uh, imparts a status effect called choking when he hits us, which causes us to take damage over time. But that guy did give us a ton of experience. Let's shoot the robot. The robot's also really annoying. Uh, there we go. And now we'll probably try to save some ammo and just use our knife instead. Or our blade, I should say, because there is, a, I guess, a marked difference. Okay, and this will probably be our last floor because at this point, you know, uh, Sword of the Stars of the Pit kind of becomes like variations on this theme. And it's a good thing because the theme is pretty good. Uh, but by the same token, I am not going to do a, you know, 8 to 10 hour run uh, of the game here because that would be ridiculous. That being said, it is, it's almost like it's a traditional roguelike and they have a reputation for being a little bit inaccessible. But this one's pretty accessible because it, even on the normal difficulty, it starts out pretty easy, but it does get uh, exceptionally difficult the further you move in. I really want to use an explosive grenade here to make sure that I don't die. Okay, uh, but he did not die either, and that concerns me. So let's use a, uh, an assault rifle here and just triple shot him. Okay, beautiful. So this is actually, uh, well, let's try the retina lock here. Maybe we'll get lucky. We did, and we got a utility belt. It's kind of uh, unfortunate to be stopping the video here because, you know, as you move throughout the game, the, the deeper you go, the, the cooler stuff you actually find. You can find stoves, and you can, you know, unlock recipes, and then those recipes are kind of persistent. They stay with you for the rest of your, not just the game, but for the rest of, like, your career, as long as you remember them or keep some kind of resource on them. So, uh, the more you play, actually, the better chance you have of succeeding on an individual run as well, because you learn the crafting recipes for really good items. Uh, but, we're not gonna see that, but I think you have a pretty good idea of what's going on in Sword of the Stars of the Pit. Uh, I really like this game. I consider it kind of like a sci-fi counterpart to Dungeons of Dreadmore. And, of course, you can get this along with the Binding of Isaac, Tether Glitch, Die More Edition, Hackslash Loot, Paranautical Activity, and Dungeons of Dreadmore. I hope I didn't forget anything in the Humble Weekly Roguelike Sale, which is located at the uh, link in the video description below. And, of course, it's pay what you want, and the money goes to many good causes. Again, as always, thanks for watching. If you want to see more of my stuff, you can find it at youtube.com slash northernlion, and I will see you tomorrow with yet another Humble Bundle Spotlight. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.